Good morning, crafty friends. It is Saturday. It looks like it's going to be a beautiful day out, and I am heading back over to Stamp Joy. It is 8 o'clock. Um, we have until 8.30 to get seated for opening remarks, and uh, you might notice my partner in crime is missing. She has to go to a Zoom driver's ed class, so I'm going to go pick her up later, and uh, yeah, and then we're going to get our day started and have some crafty fun. To kick off the second and last day of Stamp Joy, Taylor did some opening remarks and then Kevin came on stage and shared about the new building. Up on screen now are some photos of it, but make sure to subscribe if you're not already because in the final vlog in this series, I get a look inside the building and it was a very special tour. After we got a peek at the new building, there were more prizes to be given out. They were just giving out prizes all the time it seemed at this. Then it was time to get the day started. Because Presley was back in the hotel room, I couldn't go and start any make and takes, so I went out in the lobby and spent a couple hours there. Tailored Expressions has a little store set up. They sell some exclusive products to Stamp Joy. They have some collaborations with other companies that they are selling. And at each of the make and takes, if you like the stamps you used, they have the full sets out there for you to buy. So it's super easy to find the sets you like. Also out in the lobby is this beautiful display of cards. I'm going to assume that they were made by the Tailored Expressions design team, and it's just always so fun to look at the cards and get new ideas. Also, there were four different stations set up from non-Tailored Expressions companies where you could go and see little demos. My first stop was at the Brutus Monroe table and the owner Christopher Allen was there demonstrating the stamp and stick mat, or maybe it's the stick and stamp mat. He has been selling these in his store for a while, but there was a special collaboration with Tailored Expressions for a fun design for the mat and some yummy smelling mist to clean it. Now here I'm just showing you a quick piece of his presentation, but it was very informative. So if you want to see and hear the whole thing, at the end of this video I do have that for you to watch. Next up, I stopped at the Stampin' Storage table. They introduced some new storage for Tailored Expressions little mini strip pieces, and they had a collaboration stamp set with some fun sentiments. You got to ink blend a little tag there, and it went on the bottom of your name tag, and here's a look at the sentiment I chose and how I decorated mine. The third table was ThermoWeb and Sue Doherty was showing off their adhesive foil transfer sheets. Unfortunately, I didn't get any photos or videos here, but it was definitely fun to use those. Well, it is 10 o'clock on Saturday. I'm gonna go back and pick up Presley from driver's ed class. I hope she's ready to go because I am ready to do some make and takes and she didn't want me to get started without her, so. I did my best. Now, shh, don't tell her. I did stop by a couple of the demo booths, but I'm gonna go back like I've never seen what they have to offer. But I did <laughs> save the one that she's really looking forward to, which is the Olo markers. I did save that one so we could do it together. Um, so yeah, hopefully soon you'll see us walking together back to Stamp Joy. In the hallway on the way back, I was able to stop by the card swap board. This was the only time that it wasn't super full when I walked by it. And this is a look at each of the cards that got swapped the night before. If you haven't seen vlog number three, make sure to check that out to find out about the card swap. I do have it linked in the description box below. If you look closely here, you'll see the cards that Presley and I made for the swap. 
Well, I picked her up from driver's ed. How was class today? Long. <laughs> did it seem like forever since you were trying to get the back over to Stamp Joy? It really did. It felt like a lot. It's, it's not very nice to sit in a room for two and a half hours. Uh, are you excited to get over there and make some more cards? Yeah, I am. All right, so we're on our way back over. We're off the elevator going across the skywalk and all the way down here, Presley is on her phone on the Tailored Expression site looking at all the Create and Quads because apparently the scenic route class yesterday really left an impression on her and she wants more. Yeah, they're really pretty cards and um, I, they're just like really nice to do, I guess. And kind I want to do more. Yeah. Easy how you make four. It's a very uh, scenic, well not scenic, right. Yeah, it's very nice time making them. Yeah. Um, so you'll get to see those cards and those stencils later, but the stencil, the stencil itself is exclusive to just Stamp Joy. It won't come out for a while. But yeah, um, she might start spending all her allowance on crafty stuff too. Possibly. The first thing we did when we got back over to the convention center was stop by the Olo marker table. And Lori Craig told Presley all about the markers. And let me just tell you, Presley was super impressed. Presley does have her own channel here on YouTube and just the other day uploaded a little review video. If you want to check it out, I will link it in that description box below. Presley, are you going to get some Olo markers? I revisited the other tables with Presley, and don't worry, I did let her in on the fact that it wasn't my first trip to that table. Once we finished out there, it was time for lunch, so Presley and I grabbed our boxes and went in and ate. Now, originally Lisa had ordered what food she wanted, and Presley decided for this meal she would rather have my sandwich than Lisa's salad, so we did trade. After lunch, we did get some pictures with our table mates because we were afraid that they would leave before we got the chance. I just want to say thank you to each of these ladies for sitting with us and taking us under your wing. We loved getting to know you and hope to see you next year. Presley and I had two final make and takes to complete, so we got those all finished and then we headed downstairs for our final class. Saturday's class had two sessions and once again we chose the later one. This was taught by Taylor and by Heather Nichols and it was my nemesis medium alcohol inks. When the class list came out I had tried again to learn alcohol inks and couldn't do it so I knew I wanted to sign up for this so I would have somebody right there kind of teaching me what to do. The first thing we did was a tile, and then we did three pieces using different techniques on alcohol ink paper. Now, I did get lots of help from Presley because, believe it or not, she had never used alcohol inks before, but she seemed to be a professional at it. It was fun in the end. I don't know, maybe I'm just too structured for alcohol inks, but it was a good time and Presley really loved it. Now, when we got back, we did make some more alcohol ink tiles and I will show you those in the final vlog where I also share what we bought while we were on our trip. While I continue sharing with you some video from the class, I thought it would be a fun time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. These are just fun little questions that we can get to know each other a little bit better. Today I would like to know, have you ever used alcohol inks? And what do you think about them? On a scale of one to five, with one being, oh no, I detest them, and five being, I love them and use them all the time, let me know. You can leave that in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know you've answered and would like me to see it. I would probably give alcohol inks a three. Before I went to this class, I probably would have given them a one or two, but I did have lots of fun and actually seeing Presley's enthusiasm for them made me like it a little bit more. So we just got done with our final class, which was alcohol inks, and 
I gave them a try. Not sure they're for me. <laughs> what did you think, Presley? I might keep doing them because like they were really fun to just like be able to just like um, like push inks in random places. And really not like have to be a perfectionist about it. It was just like a lot of like fun and it it's pretty. Uh, no, like free, I guess. All right. Well, it is 3.15. We have one more make and take and then closing ceremonies in a little over an hour. So the day's almost over. And yeah, hopefully we are going to do our live tonight. So hopefully you've watched that by the time you've watched these vlogs. If not, it will be linked down in that description box. We finished up that final make and take and then it was almost time for the closing ceremony. Uh, we do have a lost and found for the weekend. It is right here. Good thing for this lost and found announcement because we realized Presley left her entire box of make and takes at that last station. And we knew that because Taylor mentioned one of the cards was a little bit different. And that's because Presley decided to go rogue or make one of those make and takes her own. There was another round of prizes, and one of the neatest things was somebody had won a mink bundle, which was like a full-size mink and lots of foils. Well, it turns out she already had one at home, so she gave that back and drew for a new winner. It was so sweet. Oh, that is the true epitome of sheer joy, right? Taylor finished by thanking everyone in her team and all the volunteers for a wonderful weekend. And let me tell you, everybody did just make it a wonderful, wonderful time. After this, Presley and I made the short walk back to the hotel to get some dinner and get ready for our evening. Uh, we try to go down to the hotel restaurant, but it's a little too busy. We might miss our lives. So we are walking to Domino's to pick up a pizza. Domino's was just a couple blocks away from the hotel. We did order on the app before we left. And once we got to Domino's, we just had to wait for maybe 10 minutes before our pizza was ready. And then we headed back to the hotel for a quick bite to eat. We finished off the evening by doing our live from the hotel room. Presley and I had a lot of fun and I think our viewers did too. If you weren't able to catch us live, I will have the replay linked in the description box below. And now it's time for the full demo of the stick and stamp mat, which let me tell you is pretty cool. I hope you'll stick around to watch it and find out more. So this is the stick and stamp mat, the tailored expressions edition. And I'm going to show today my favorite way to use it. Obviously you can use it in a misty, you can use it um, to line up sentiments, but my favorite way to use it is with a stencil. And when you take off your protective covering, obviously it is sticky. You'll take your A2 size piece of paper and the, the biggest issue that we ran into whenever we were stenciling was you place this on top and you get ink all over the outside. You are blending off the sticky and it just, it just doesn't turn out pretty. So what we did was we created the blending buddy. And what the blending buddy does is it covers up that void. So the outside area where we don't want it to be sticky and we don't want to blend is now covered. We take our A2 size card panel, we can place it inside of that void. And then we have tabs all the way around that you can place your stencil in. Now with this stencil, it has a pretty generous border. So we're not gonna use those tabs because what will happen is we will actually, the, the border um, will show up. So instead we're just gonna use a little bit of tape. Do it the old fashioned way. We'll add a little bit of tape around. And then we're ready to stencil. So we'll start with fruit punch. This is my Favorite Taylor Rainbow, the fruit punch, the candy corn, the pineapple, the pea pot, and the blue raspberry. We then take our brush and then we just need to do three swipes because we have this little palette over here where we're going to tap off our ink as opposed to here. And then we get to keep all of our ink where it's supposed to be. And so, then you can come get more here. Yep, you ah, grab it off of here instead of, because okay. I showed a demo earlier where I tapped that just a couple of times and I didn't have any ink left. So I said, we've got to figure out a way to make it so that blending is, is much simpler as well. I'm all about simplifying things because I simplify them for me so that they'll make it easier for you as well. 
So now we can grab candy corn, which is my absolute favorite Taylor color. Again, just three swipes. You don't want to brush your teeth with an ink pad. If you do that, you can remove a lot of ink in the center. You can fray the edges. Um, so just three swipes, and then you'll see how much ink we have left behind. And all of that would have just been wasted. It would have been gone. We would have, we would have put it on our mat. And the thing is, we're not using the mat for card making. We're using it to help us with card making, but we're not using that for the card. So now pineapple and uh, yellows and light peaches and light purples and things of that nature are very, very difficult to get a good blend on the first try because of, of removing your ink. But as you can see, it makes it so easy when you can just pick your color back up and you're not losing that color to get a very, very deep and beautiful vibrant blend the very first time. So that yellow is just absolutely stunning going down there. And normally that wouldn't happen because you're tapping it off and you have to go back in. I mean, I've seen so many folks that are going in and blending and going in and blending. Three, three swipes, excuse me, is all you need. Uh, yeah, I've never so seen that So one, swipe two, technique. three, that's never, it. Never. Just use three swipes. When you're patting it on here, what's happening is most of the ink is here. When I pat it, it's now getting onto all of the bristles. And now I'm gonna go in and I'm just gonna gently blend in my green. Pick up more color. Last but not least, again, three swipes. That's all you need. Put it away so you're not tempted to go back in. Tap, and there's, just, I mean, there's so much ink that we would have normally left on our paper. And nobody can see it on our paper here. Okay, and then we lift this off. And then we peel this off, and it's absolutely perfect every time. And my favorite part is when I when I would stencil in the past, I would stencil a big piece of paper. So usually a piece of paper that's about this size in the Misty. And then I'd have to choose which portion I was going to use for my card. Now that we have an A2 size piece of paper, we don't have to choose. It's already done for us. You can position your stencil wherever you want on here, and it will be exactly where you want it to be. Then um, what we'll do is we'll peel off our blending buddy. The blending buddy makes sure everything is safe and secure and does not get ink all over the place and does not get blended off. And then to remove this, you don't use a pick, you don't use scissors or a scraper. All you do is fold this in half and it will peel right off. And there's no sticky residue. There's nothing on the back that is uh, going to interfere with you using it for a card. It's very sticky still, but let's say we get ink all over it. We didn't because we used our blending buddy, which is great. But if you get ink all over it, you're gonna take your matte mist Never ever use stamp cleaner on your second stamp mat. It can remove the adhesive. We'll do about, I don't know, three or four spritzes. This one smells really, really good. It smells like cupcakes. And then you'll see that it's not sticky at all anymore. It will not stick to my hand. And now what you'll need to do is you'll take a, a paper towel or something that is lint free. We'll go ahead and just gently, this is the most important part, very gently, you will pe uh, pull off all that excess cleaner and you just want to kind of gently drag. You don't want to do any type of scrubbing. And then in the time it takes for me to throw that away, it is sticky again. Nice. So it only takes about five seconds to get sticky again. Now, if you use water or you use like a Dawn dish detergent, it might take a little bit longer because this also has a conditioner in it. So this will continually make it sticker, sticky over time more and more and more. And then you just place your little piece back on. Always save this piece and you can use it. I mean, well, I think the first test was about 1,500 washes. And then we stopped because we were like, I think that's a really good bang for your buck. 1,500 washes and, and the price point that it's at, um, it works really well. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.